Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Sauce Nathan. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. And for the people that don't know, we bundle record the episodes. So we record a couple of episodes every week, back to back. And you hit me up with this week's notes and both of them look like awesome episodes. So I can't wait to jump into it, man. And uh, what do we got on the agenda for this week? Let's talk about commitments. Let's get into discipline and actually doing what you say you're going to do. Let's talk about that. I think there's a lot of people that can benefit from a reminder around this. Mm. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to say this. In my niche in copywriting, there's lots of horror stories from clients about copywriters not meeting their commitments. And I will be completely honest, every once in a while, I'm up until two o'clock the morning before an assignment is due and I'm putting the final touches on it. And I feel like as professional as I try to be, I feel like I still struggle with this and, and I don't feel comfortable admitting that, but it is what it is. And uh, I'm expecting that I'm not the only person that struggles with this. Absolutely not. Most people struggle with this. In fact, most people, I would say all people have at some point in time, major commitment issues, whether it's, um, perceived as, as commitments in relationships with other people or following through on shit that they say they're going to do. We're recording this literally just after New Year's 2020, right? We talked about this a little bit last week and, and I think the week before that we talked, um, New Year's resolutions, right? What are those? Whether you stick to them or not, what are they? They're commitments. And the vast majority of people don't The vast majority of people that make New Year's commitments don't actually follow through on them, right? The resolve is essentially that. It's committing to doing something different and we're creatures of habit. Most people don't actually follow through on that stuff. I've found for myself and I've noticed in other people that when I make commitments for myself, because of myself, by myself, and I actually have a reason to commit myself to something, I want to do the thing, right? I've noticed in other people when they make commitments that they are actually behind, legitimately, 100%, they follow through on it, right? Most of us make commitments to ourselves and other people that are half-hearted, right? For whatever reason, we want to look good, we want to please somebody, we whatever. And those commitments are the ones that the night before it's due at two o'clock in the morning, you're up getting it done because you want to follow through and you want to keep your word and you don't want to look like an idiot and you don't want to feel bad when it's not done. But if you actually wanted to make that commitment to begin with, it would have been done way before then. And that's ultimately what we're talking about. So we're going to get to the last point of that, but I'm going to bring up one of the things that I've noticed just throughout life making commitments for significant others. I know a lot of people that have said, Oh, I I promise I'm going to, or I'm going to, I'm going to go on a new diet and I'm going to lose the extra weight or I'm going to stop smoking or I'm going to whatever, whatever. And if the commitment is made for somebody else and they don't actually make it for themselves, it seems like that's always where they, they, have to spray the extra cologne before they come home because they snuck a cigarette on the drive home or they, uh, they have to hide the Burger King bag in the garbage before they walk in because they snuck some Burger King before they got home. Um, what is it? Why is it that it's so difficult for us to follow through with commitments that we make to even like the most important people is to, the most important people to us in the world? Because we don't want to fucking do the thing. Like, that at the end of the day, I mean, think about it. We're all a bunch of grown ass um, elementary kids, right? We're old enough to be able to do what we want to do. And we make commitments and promises to other people that we really don't want to keep. We don't want to follow. Like, I don't want to, right? But I will because you love me and I want to make you happy. Stupid. It, 
and that shit never works out. If you commit to doing a thing that you actually don't want to do, the chances of you following through on it are not very high. When we commit specifically to our significant others or like our really close friends, when we commit to those people, generally we will commit to them because we want them to be happy. The problem is, is that in keeping that commitment, we are not happy. And it's really hard for us to be unhappy so that somebody else, even though they're really important to us, can be happy. Eventually, those don't work out. It causes resentment. It creates issues. Like, really? You're going to spray extra cologne on yourself because you snuck a cigarette on the way home in the car? Like, my grandfather told me this when I was a little kid. And I remember exactly where I was when he said this. He looked right at me and he said, you can bullshit me, but you can't bullshit yourself. Keep this in mind, kid. You can't bullshit a bullshitter. And I've never forgotten that. And the truth of it is, is, you know, if somebody loves you enough that you can be who and what you are and they give you guidance and you may or may not take it, that's one thing. That's being in a relationship. Somebody else asking you to make a commitment about something that you don't want to do yet and forcing you to make that commitment, they are actually not in it for your own good. They're trying to make you do something because they want you to do something. That shit never works out. Mm -hmm. So why do we take on both personal commitments that maybe we're not actually 100% committed to or commitments for the people that we love that we're definitely not committed to? Why do we agree to these things both personally and in our relationships with people? Typically because we want to be accepted. We want to be okay in the eyes of somebody else. We want to feel like they like us. That's the majority of the reason that we do that. Now, there's other things that come into play in this. We all have an agenda, and generally, we've got many agendas that are all kind of bundled up in one. If you're talking about dealing with a client, you commit to shit that you don't want to do, it's because you don't want to lose the money. You don't want to lose the client right? When you do that in an interpersonal relationship, the significant other, it's because you've probably been in that relationship enough to know that if you don't, it's going to cause bullshit. So you're going to go ahead and lie about it. So you don't have to deal with the bullshit right now. At the end of the day, it comes down to, we want to be liked. We want to be accepted. We want to feel connected, right? And a lot of us don't want to let other people down. Right. So we've got all of this working against us, this thing that we don't want to do, or, and it's not even necessarily something that we don't want to do. Oftentimes it's something that we just commit to because it appeases somebody. And it's not that we do or don't want to do the thing, but we committed to something that's not important to us. It's more important to the other person. And now we're obligated, right? We're eventually going to get there in, in, in these notes, but it's, it's that whole idea. If it's not important enough for you to commit to yourself to do and follow through and you're committing to somebody else that you're willing to do a thing, you're basically not living your life the way you want to. And I don't know about you guys, but fuck that, right? If I'm going to commit to doing something, I, I, and I take the time to make these decisions. I weigh right? How important is it to me to like make this commitment? Like, am I actually going to commit to this and follow through? I don't like committing to something to myself and not following through. I really don't like committing to somebody else and not following through because what inevitably happens is that you don't follow through and then you beat your own ass for, God, uh, now I feel like crap and all this stuff. We don't have to put ourselves through that if we would just take the time to actually think out our commitments to ourselves and others before we commit to them. Okay, so this is something that I see run rampant, especially in the entrepreneurial realm, over committing, committing to way too much stuff. Uh, I've got 40 hours of client week, work a week, and somebody just presented this awesome opportunity that I can get in on the ground level, and 
I only have to, I, I, I get 20% of the business and I just have to put my work and energy and my knowledge equity into it. And then somebody else just told me that I can get on this affiliate marketing. And so uh, this looks like a, a way too good of a deal to pass up. And I really want all of these things. And now I've said yes to 15 things and I only have the time and energy to actually follow through and be effective at one or two of them. And I see this all the time, especially in high performers, why the constant addiction to overcommitment, I, I would say. They're people pleasers. They can't face two things, telling somebody else no and missing the opportunity. So they way overcommit themselves and then they don't follow through or when they do follow through, it's half-assed. We've, we've got a term for it in this space, right? And in this space, what I mean is, is client-centric businesses over-promising and under-delivering. That's what it comes down to. We want to appease other people and we don't want to miss the opportunity. And most of us say yes way too much and we say no way too not often enough. And that's the problem. Way too not often enough. Mm -hmm. so, Just making sure people are still listening. So if somebody's struggling with this, because I, I, I can imagine there's at least one listener right now that's saying they're shaking their head up and down. They're saying, yep, I, in 2019, I committed to way too much. It blew up in my face. I don't want to make the same mistake in 2020. How do people avoid, how do people break that habit of over committing? Before you tell somebody yes, or before you tell somebody no, ask yourself these three questions. If I take this on, am I going to feel like I should do it? Or is it something I actually want to do? If I take this on, am I ever going to ask myself, why do I have to do this? Right? Look back at 2019 and ask yourself all of the times that you caught yourself saying, I should do that. I should finish that thing. I should whatever, right? Why are you in that position of shooting on yourself? The second one is have to. God, I have to get this done. It's fucking two o'clock in the morning and it's got to be done by tomorrow. I have to get this done. Really? Why did you do that to yourself? Think back through the process of dealing with that person that you made a commitment to that now you're having to be up at two o'clock in the morning, having to get a thing done it would have been a lot easier to say no to that. And then the third piece is obligation. Look, at, look back at 2019 and ask yourself, out of all the shit that I did, what did I actually feel obligated to? And if you look at those three questions and, and what led you to ask yourself those three questions, you'll probably find a pattern of either appeasing people or trying to not miss an opportunity. And both of those are a disaster waiting to happen. I feel personally attacked by this podcast episode. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so any closing thoughts? We've got a couple of minutes and I want to give you a, uh, a little bit of time to wrap up and, and um, put a nice tight bow on this. Nice and tight. You've got all the time in the world to do everything that you want to do to the extent that you possibly can do it if you stop saying yes to every little tiny fucking thing that comes across your desk, period. It is totally okay to say no. And if you look at the people that are actually successful, they say no 80% of the time and they say yes, probably way less than 20% of the time. People who need to please other people have um, internalized this idea of needing something from somebody else or something outside of themselves to make themselves feel complete. And if you're doing this, you're actually not putting hundred percent into all the shit that you're actually getting done for the people around you and your reputation's getting less and less and less and less by the week, by the day, by the month. And I don't know about you, but I only want to do the shit that I really want to do. And I want to do it a hundred percent. Stop saying yes to every stupid little thing. And if you don't want to do something and somebody else wants you to question why you're in that relationship with them. Okay. I'm going to have to take some time to reflect because even still right now in my life, I'm guilty of some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And 
man, just when I thought I had my business under control, landing comes along and flips up the chessboard on me. It comes down to essentially this thing, growth. None of us are perfect. None of us are ever going to be perfect. But our job every day is to do what it takes to feel the best about ourselves as possible. And as soon as we stop obligating ourselves and putting ourselves in the, I should do that, or feeling like we have to do shit for other people, eventually we get to a point where we have strong boundaries and we tell people, that sounds awesome and I'd love to do that, but no thank you. Okay, so if people feel like they should listen to more episodes of the podcast, they have to get more of their Land and Porter fix, where should they go? Well, they're obligated to go to salesgrillapodcast.com. Awesome. I love it, man. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I can't really stand, and I know that that's mutual. Peace out.